welcome to the Our World Heritage 2021 debate. 2021 debate is a year of events focused on protection, conservation and management of world heritage. We want to uncover untold stories to broaden our views on heritage practices and future perspectives. Knowledge gathered this year will be published in 2022 on the occasion of the 50th anniversary of the Convention. The Our World Heritage Initiative is created by individuals working on 100% voluntary capacity. We would like to point out that Our World Heritage provides an open dialogue platform that is based on voluntary work of session organizers and speakers. Our World Heritage welcomes diverse viewpoints in the spirit of collegial debate where mutual respect is afforded to all. Please note that the expressed views do not necessarily reflect the official position of Our World Heritage. We thank today's speakers for telling their stories and we thank you, the listeners, for your kind interest and questions. If you want to remain up to date on our activities, you can follow our social media. We maintain channels in multiple languages to break through the language barriers and connect to local communities. You will find all links on our website, ourworldheritage.org. Thank you for being with us today and we wish you a very fruitful event. registrations for uh, four events and one big conference for the month of March is already open. So I encourage the audience to log into the Our World Heritage website and to uh, register in these events. So today's event, um, uh, even under the theme of tourism, our uh, feeling is that the interest of tourism and the interest of studies has to synchronize more because unless there is tourism heritage conservation will have its limits you cannot expect the government or the civil society to continue to uh, support heritage unless there is some sort of uh, an economic as well as a social asset and at the same time um uh Tourism is part of a planning process, as we will hear today from those people who have been working on integrated uh, urban and territorial planning. Tourism is just one component of this overall process of uh, territorial development. So we have asked uh, uh, this group, uh, the China and uh, India, uh, China and uh, the French team, to focus their presentation on the aspect of tourism and territorial planning. Some of the other events we had a focus on governance, especially as the process of decentralization is increasing in different parts of the world. You cannot decentralize unless you de also build the local capacity. So we had some examples from France and some other countries of how NGOs, universities, and specialized entities support the local authorities in the uh, protection and the enhancement of heritage. And others have focused on how tourism industry can become the locomotive of development. It's all very well for people to come up with recommendations saying, yes, we have to have a multi-sectorial, a multi-stakeholder planning process. But what do you do in a country that doesn't have capital? What do you do in a country when, when the only investor is the tourism industry? So how do you mitigate between these different interests? So uh, you will see uh, on the website, we have uh, in fact now 24 events, three specifically on uh, policies and the others are thematic or especially case studies because we want to know in what way some of our recommendations are realistic in, the, in, in many countries with different government structure, with different economic and social structure. It's, it's just too theoretical to continue talking about recommendations and what we should do, et cetera. 
It, it has to be grounded in reality. So we hope uh, to hear from you and uh, from China and uh, on, in France and how you are um, proceeding with this integrated planning. So uh, with that, uh, I turn the floor back to uh, Francoise. Thank you, that was a bit long, sorry. Thanks, uh, thanks a lot, Minja. And um, please, uh, Professor Jotien, uh, explain us what you are trying to, to do in this huge area on the Delta Yangtze River. The floor is yours. Okay. Uh, uh, everybody, uh, good afternoon. Uh, in China, it's afternoon. In France, maybe in morning. Uh, uh, I Today, I was uh, very glad to introduce some studies. Uh, this study is uh, very new. It's uh, just uh, finished uh, last year. OK, okay. Um, my topic is study on the heritage and uh, tourism. It's a special strategy in the Yangtze River Delta. This, is, this Yangtze River Delta, as uh, everybody know, but uh, just uh, three years ago, uh, the Chinese central government yeah. is a special zone. It's the national zone. Uh, but isn't uh, all of the uh, Yangtze River I will, I will give you some uh, introduce. Uh, the background is the national uh, strategy of the integrated development of the Yangtze uh, River Delta. You can see the, where is the Yangtze River Delta. You can see this the Chinese map. This is the uh, the cities, uh, Chinese cities, the, the, the layout. So you can see the Yangtze River uh, Delta is the Shanghai. Uh, this is the Shanghai. It's a very, the density of the, the, the cities is very high. This is the light, the light, the light in the, in the uh, Yangtze River Delta. This is the, the, the Yangtze River. Uh, this is the Tai, Hu, Tai Lake, Tai Lake. It's the, the East Sea, yeah. so it's the Shanghai. Yeah. So it means the population and the city's density is very high in the, in the, in the China. Uh, it's also is the, uh, highest uh, developed uh, the area in, in the China. This is the Beijing. This is the Guangzhou. Shenzhen. Guangzhou, Shenzhen is here. So where the, what, what's the, the area of the, 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 the Yangtze River uh, uh, in the national strategy? This is the Yangtze River here. This is Shanghai. In this area, we have three metropolitan areas. This is the Shu Xi Chang, Shu Zhou, Wu Xi Chang Zhou. Okay, this is, uh, is the group, uh, the big, group, big city group. This is Nanjing. Uh, this is the Hefei in the Anhui province. This is the Hangzhou. This is Ningbo. In this area, we have the, there are five metropolitan areas and three development, development corridors. The corridors is around the sea in the north and in the south and around the, 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 the high uh, speed uh, uh, the high, train, uh, high speed the, 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 the road uh, this three. and this is the area uh, there isn't a, there is including Shanghai part of Jiangsu province part of Anhui province and part of the, the, the Zhejiang province Shanghai then Anhui, the the the, the Hefei, and then Nanjing and Hangzhou. This is the area. Uh, this is just uh, the the Yangtze River Delta area. The, the is the it's a bigger area, but in this uh, area, in the core, uh, in the central of this area, is what we call the uh, demonstration zone of the green and integrated ecological development uh, the zone. This is the part of the, uh, the part of the, this big area, uh, just in the here, uh, in the here, uh, in, is here in the, the east of the Thai Lake and the, between the Thai Lake and the Shanghai. Uh. So this area, uh, this area is the, about the three, uh, two thousand four hundred thirty kilometers. Is a very big. Is the uh, more than uh, thirty percent of the Shanghai. Uh, so the Shanghai is about the three uh, three thousand and three uh, hundreds uh, uh, kilometer area. It's a big area. It's the part of the the Suzhou, part of the like, uh, um, Jiaxing, uh, and part of the Shanghai. Uh, this this is the Thai Lake. Uh, 
this tariq you can see so this is a big area the, in this area we have uh, in the planning in, in the, 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 the territory of planning uh, limited uh, uh, so uh, in the start up area it's beginning to 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 construct beginning to to uh, to build it's about the three uh, three hundred and thirty uh fifty three kilometers and this area we have the in the core area is the about the, the 100, the nearby the 200 kilometers. In this area, uh, the landscape and the tradition uh, and the historic uh, and heritage is very rich for uh, and unique. Uh, I think a lot of the, the, the friend uh, in the uh, audience will be know or even to visit this area. Uh, something like Suzhou, Hangzhou, something like Zhouzhuang, Tongli, some just, uh, uh, water towns, okay. With it. So we are historic towns and very, very beautiful. The lake, small lake, and the canal uh, integrated the farmland. But uh, not uh, on, at the same time, there's also some new uh, villages. Small village, the historic villages is some part of the better, even some new, uh, new the villages. In this, uh, this is the landscape. A cultural landscape in this area. This is, the, I think, we think that this is a very important resource of, for the development in this area, even special for the green and ecological uh, integrate. Uh, this, this is a, a, a very short shoe uh, in the, the, the ter uh, this area. Yeah, we, uh, is it the territory development in different uh, the, 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 the time? This is uh, 1990. This red, red part is the, the built area. It's, we can see, uh, think about this is the, uh, the cities, farms, and the villages. This is the, uh, the green and integrated ecological zone uh, in this area. In this area is about 2,000, more than 2,000 kilometers, uh, square kilometers. This is uh, 1990s. This is from 1990s to 2000. This is till the 2010. So you can see this area uh, uh, followed the, the, the economic development, followed the, 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 uh, the urbanism, uh, urbanization. So this area, the, the population and the cities and the towns, is the, the scale is bigger and bigger. In the, the, the fact that uh, more uh, bigger and bigger in, uh, uh, in past times. So in this area, it, till now, without the big uh, built areas, uh, built areas. So this is Suzhou, uh, this is the Jiaxing, uh, this is Jiaxan, this is Shanghai, yeah, Shanghai. this is Wuxi, uh, Tai Lake. Yeah. This is the uh, Tuzhou, okay, you know. So the, in this area, yeah, as we showed that uh, more than the 2000, 2000 uh, uh, three, uh, 400 square kilometers. Uh, but in this area, the built area is about the uh, 720 square kilometers. This is the uh, built area, including some big town, big city, uh, and the small town. The population in this area, uh, about um, uh, two, three million, uh, uh, million uh, more than three million uh, population. The Wujiang, uh, uh, this is Jiaxiang, uh, Jiaxiang, uh, this is Qingpu, this is belong to Shanghai, this belong to uh, Suzhou, this belong to uh, Zhejiang. So this is the background. Uh, for our studies, uh, we this is big studies. Uh, we joined this study is special for the tourism, the heritage conservation, and how to integrate uh, this uh, this uh, two part. Even to uh, think about agriculture, uh, uh, the, the farmland, uh, the agriculture industry. So we think that we should uh, uh, base on the the. the heritage based on the cultural landscape, this resource, to think out how to, uh, 
how to uh, the, the the strategy of the uh, the spatial planning, how to do to give some new uh, policy, new layout, new special layout, uh, special the, the layout. So you see, we think of the three parts about the resource of, of the uh, development, the local culture, and the, the, the driving forces of development, the culture and the regional development is belong to uh, was based on the, the culture. And the model or the pattern that not only think of the tourism, but also the conservation, also the agriculture. Uh, the, for the, uh, the the special uh, uh, planning of the uh, strategies of the special plan, uh, uh, now I very briefly to introduce the, the four parts. Uh, the first one is restore blue. Blue is means waters and the green. This is very important. I will and how to reshape of the waterways and the river transportation between uh, the. the Water towns, not only the, the historic town. Uh, three is <coughs> constructing the, the scenic byway and scenic road uh, for the cultural tourism. And then the last is the in, inherit, inheriting the traditional waters towns landscape. Uh, the first part is the, about the, 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 the restoring of the blue, it's the uh, water system and then the green system. Uh, this is uh, the, the change that you can see that the, the, the water, the area of the water, the percent of the area water in this area is, uh, is declining. Uh, it's from 19, uh, 2002 to 2005 uh, till the, the, uh, 2019. Uh, this is the, we found that it's a very clear, uh, very uh, <laughs> clear the, 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 the air photo in the 19, uh, 18 four. Yeah. So you can see this area. This is very, very beautiful and a very, very rich for and a very, very unique uh, the, the, the context of the water system. Yeah. In this area, not only think that not only uh, we our image is the, just the, the canal. In this area, with very much of the this, uh, much of part of the water system in this area is the big, uh, the tide is too big, the big and small uh, lake or small pool. Uh, so this is a very unique. Uh, in this area is is canal yeah, for the in, in, uh, irrigation, uh, but this is not only for irrigation, it's for farmland, for the culture, for the uh, living. This uh, I don't. This this Zhou Zhuang, uh, the Tongli, uh, uh, the Li Li, uh, uh, a lot of the, our uh, friends is visited this area. This is Nanxi, Nanxi. Yeah. Uh, the first uh, the 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 strategy for this part is restoring the lake and waterways, increase the percent. Uh, percentage of the water surface. Uh, I always think in uh, the the the. Uh, Nearly the, the, the target of the the, uh, the percent of the the water uh, surface uh, into in the in the future five years we want to three percent three percent to to change. And this is the, the just the, is the the, the the area other the, the area of the, the the waters, but the, another is the landscape. The landscape is in this area is three or uh, four uh, typological, so four types. Uh, not only water system. Uh, this is the, for this is the big lake, uh, big lake, uh, and the big part is the we think the which land. It is small and middle small the, the lakes and the ports uh, for this. And this area is the nearby the the Thai Lake. So for the for the fishing, uh, the, the people for the fishing. So they built this the water system like this, and the we the, it's part uh, maybe so we see the the, the um, uh, often uh, usually yeah, just the canal. So you see, a uh, four parts is four different the the the, the models of the uh, 
town, uh, the the towns, uh, the, the we see the, the settlements that built the the the, 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 uh, the border. The for this area, we, we have for the uh, the uh, we change some the, the you know I think that before you, you you remember I just mentioned the the the, the develop the, the the different parts uh, different times uh, the the urbanism the develop uh, the, the built areas is is it's. Uh, uh, extend uh, very much uh, some built uh, some built area isn't good for the ecology. So in this area we want to move some out and smaller some area. But this should be isn't everything move out? Isn't every uh, village move out? But too much. Uh, if too much, we move. Yeah, so we want to build you know, this is our vision in this area, in this type of the landscape. And another is uh, the big part is the, the, the canal, just the waterway, the canal. So now this uh, water system isn't very good enough. We we want to the to, to linked uh, linked uh, um, make them to the to network uh, for the for the canal uh, waterway system. Uh, and uh, build some the uh, ecological units, uh, built uh, um, to um, many uh, green space. Uh, green space. Uh, this area maybe uh, in the future, this is the landscape, uh, the, the, the countryside landscape, rural landscape, something like this. It's something different. And the, in this area, we want to um, build more. Uh, Forest, a bit more forest, because uh, it, because before uh, uh, the people uh, uh, for the um, develop built for the build, extending uh, settlement extending town are various, and to um, for the agriculture industry uh, the the forest isn't enough, uh, and uh, for the ecological isn't good. So uh, we, according to different types, uh, to plan different um, layout of the forest. The one, two, three, four, five. It's different, uh, but uh, for become a, a, a new landscape according to the uh, uh, now the basement of the. Uh, canal and uh, the, the, the lakes and the weight lands and build different forms of the of the, the forest. Uh, so this is a vision, uh, this is part of the vision. This is the central, the core area uh, uh, of the this. Uh, 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 I think the the this the uh, young uh, green and uh, uh, eco uh, ecology integrated ecology. Uh, this, uh, uh, this zone, the, the core area of this zone. Yeah, this is the big top. This is the big lake. This is the, the wheat land. This is the uh, canal system, the waterway system, the area. Uh, it's the, some big town, and some small villages, and small development areas, something like that. Yeah. The second is the, the, the reshaping the, the waterways and the river. Uh, transport in this. Uh, uh, this is the historic, uh, historic uh, the the the, the uh, waterways, waterways, uh, from Suzhou to, to Jiaxing, even to the Hangzhou, uh, uh, to Shanghai, Songjiang, Qingpu, to to Tongli, uh, is to, to from the Lili to 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 Fuzhou. This is the historic way we 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 study the the, the historic uh, the, the, the materials yeah, and. And for the planning now, we want to reduce the, now this is a water system uh, existing, but unuseful, uh, unuseful, just for for the for the irrigation, just for the for the uh, before for the fishing, something like this. So we want to three. Uh, one is cultural uh, tourism waterways and ecological waterways and uh, irrigation waterways. Three system. The three system will be. Uh, it's a it's a very complicated. I just uh, 
introduced the, the cultural uh, tourist canals. Same thing I said, it's two, two level is the big, big uh, uh, canal that use this kind of the, uh, suggesting they use this kind of ships. And in, in the uh, small towns or in the villages, something like this. Uh, so this is the way, uh, um, this is the plan of the, the these two kind of the uh, waterways linked link uh, in this area. The historical towns uh, about uh, is the historical towns are uh, 18, uh, 18, one, eight, 18 uh, historical towns. So what to, we want to link them together. Uh, this the Zhuzhuang, uh, Tongli, Lili, Zhengzhe, Zhujiajiao. This is very famous, but also another like Eshita is very famous, but another Wuzhen, Chendeng, Jingxi, Jingzhe. The second is the uh, constructing the scenic byway uh, uh, for the for the scenic the scenic road. I think it's just the scenic road. on the land the scenic road to link uh, some of the big and the important uh, the historic towns that link them together. This is the scenic. This scenic road isn't the highway, isn't the fast way. Yeah, just is the middle sky, middle scale. Uh, scale. It's very beautiful and around the, the, uh, the shape is around the, the river uh, and the, the, the two sides is a very beautiful, a big plant, something like this. Uh, in this area, we try to suggest the Lili is the center, is the, is the cultural tourism the, the service center because it's in the center, uh, is the circle, uh, is the um, 30 kilometers. Yeah. Uh, this is the we see the, the scenic road before, not only for the for the for the cars, but to give some the green uh, transportation, yeah. something like the, the driver, the, the walking, uh, the running, and even the green bus. This is another vision. The three is uh, the four is the the, the, the integrated uh, in, inherited the traditional water towns. It's the townscape, uh, traditional water townscape. Uh, so <laughs> it's a uh, three, four models. This is this kind of model. We, we give a lot of the the service. Uh, this is when this is the low local. Uh, this is the the, the water uh, in the, the water land uh, uh, area. This in the the, the local area. This thing, the, the, the canal, uh, the waterways, canal network area. And give some plan, that's it. Three parts, uh, town and, uh, and, and the village, uh, the, the scale uh, and the, 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 um, uh, the forms of the, 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 uh, the, the village and the towns is different. So different forms in this area. The different area use different forms. This is the you know, tradition. This is the uh, cultural landscape. This is based on the the, the, the uh, uh, fabric or contract of this uh, of this land. Uh, the the they last part. Just to conclude, uh, the okay. Yeah, according to, yeah, last last part. Uh, the, this is the big one. But we from the top to down to the local plan. This is the, the local plan of Tongli, yeah, local plan of Tongli. In this area, we uh, detail, uh, detail uh, the, the, in the local plan about the, the two parts is the conservation, the zoning, uh, conservation zoning uh, of, the, of the, this area. Uh, three very important is, is village and the towns and the lakes and the farmland. And give some the new, uh, Scenic road and the waterways, uh, waterways, something like this, uh, something like this. And the, uh, the target is the, to how to integrate uh, the cultural, tourism, and agriculture uh, industry to put uh, this area develop uh, not only by the tourism, but also can put them the 
another industry. And for the tourism, not only uh, focus on this, this area, the history area, they, they can go the, uh, the rural area to, to the, go to the countryside. Okay. This is a, it's a new uh, vision, one of the new vision of water towns uh, in this area. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, um, yeah. Professor Jotien. And during the yeah. time uh, Xiao Yong is uh, prepared to share a screen, uh, I would like to, to say that since more than 20 years, you are working on this place, first about the typology of the historic city. And in 20 years, there is huge change in China about uh, tourism, as most of the tourists are Chinese. And in the most populated place in this area around Shanghai. So thank you so much because uh, we can see how oh, you use the resource to have new approach. Thanks so much, Xiao Yong. Xiao Yong, the floor is yours. You have also since more than twenty years working on heritage sites like uh, Pingyao and uh, you, you are both uh, working on research and the practical approach with local uh, inhabitants. Please take the floor. Thank you, Francoise. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Okay, okay. So, uh, hello uh, everyone. Uh, thank uh, Francoise and Minja. Uh, it is my pleasure to present our uh, work in the field of heritage and uh, uh, talk about uh, the balance between the heritage conservation and uh, the tourism development. Yeah. Um, I, uh, today I would like to maybe introduce uh, two cases, uh, in, maybe they're in, in two scales. One is about uh, a heritage city. It is a city municipal uh, level and the other is uh, provincial level. So, but they have the same uh, opinions also to um, uh, think about how to uh, refine the balance between the heritage conservation with an integrated approach. Yeah. So um, at first, uh, I would like to uh, talk about the first topic, some efforts for achieving the SDG goals in a world heritage city. Uh, I would like to take the Pinya as a case. Uh, maybe you know well, now um, when we mention a world heritage city, whenever we mention or uh, we mention Pinya, Lijiang or Venice, uh, Longarbon, uh, Prague, etc., etc., and we'll uh, uh, hear many criticism because um, everyone will talk about more and more tourists there and uh, uh, less and less local people uh, living inside the historical cities, etc. Um, I would like to say that uh, that is uh, reality. Um, but I always think that maybe for an urban planner or experts, and we, uh, the criticism is not enough. So we should do something to uh, change this, this kind or trying to uh, change this attempt and uh, trying to achieve the sustainable development goals. So here I just mentioned some efforts. That means uh, maybe it is not, it is far away from the uh, sustainable development goals, but to the, the attempt, it is very, uh, interesting and very uh, useful. Okay, uh, second, yeah. So uh, from the case of Pinyao, at first I would like to uh, emphasize attributes and values of, the, uh, of this kind of, of world heritage site. This is a human habitat world heritage. That means this kind of world heritage site, they have two attributes, one is heritage and the other is a human habitat. Uh, we uh, often, we will uh, talk about it as a living heritage, but they are facing the dual threats or challenges. One is a negative protection, uh, 
in the part of the residential district. And the another part may be very uh, overdeveloped or over-decorated commercial facade because they have the tourist uh, value. But maybe we also talk a lot, uh, we talk more about the outstanding universal value for a World Heritage Site. But for the local people, maybe they have another uh, feelings or some other ideas about the values. For example, in 2018, we have sent a questionnaires to the local inhabitants and we have got a very, very interesting response and from the WeChat, social medias, etc. And we found that uh, not only the outstanding universal value and uh, the, the, the heritage, the tangible and intangible heritage also have a very uh, strong uh, local value. That's mean the social and the cultural values for the emotional connection, identity, welfare for the stakeholders, heritage community and heritage cities. So when we talk, uh, maybe we talk about the UNESCO policy, in 19, uh, 2015 policy document for the integration of a sustainable development perspective into the process of World Heritage Convention uh, to talk about the environmental sustainability, inclusive social development, inclusive economic development, and the fostering of peace and security. I mean, uh, this is quite important for this kind of World Heritage Site because we are not uh, they are not only a, a, a world heritage with outstanding universal, but also it is an urban area. Uh, one, part, uh, uh, one part of the city uh, with the, the local communities and they need the uh, inclusive social development and inclusive de uh, economic development, etc. So that's the point that we should think about the integrated approach uh, with uh, a toolbox, for example, the, uh, including the planning tool, permission tool, monitoring tool. Maybe it is uh, used more uh, for by, by the uh, WHC. And also maybe for the local level, we should use a financial tool and a governance tools to integrate the local people to uh, conserve the heritage, heritage and the develop, develop the world heritage city. So the, um, the practice, the PR practice is uh, maybe uh, we, at first we should set up the objectives and establish the strategies and with ap appropriate approaches. The objectives is uh, uh, from our master conservation plan and we set a uh, we think that uh, we defined that the, uh, the ancient city of Pinyang should be an urban area with integrated functions of culture, tourism, and habitat. That means not only the tourism. So the culture and habitat should be emphasized in the future work. And we would like to make the ancient city of Pinyang a cultural ancient city and a livable World Heritage Site. So based on these objectives, and we have set up uh, three strategies. Uh, one is a conservation strategy, and the second is a li livable strategy. That means to improve the living conditions and, uh, and improve the infra infrastructure, uh, transportation, uh, to avoid air pollution, etc. And the third strategy is to is develop a new industry that means not only besides the tourism uh, industry strategy and uh, uh, to uh, base to est uh, establish a co-governance model to protect our common heritage that means we should establish uh, not only the uh, top down but also the bottom up co-governance models yeah to guarantee these three uh, strategies and because of the short of the time and uh, uh, today, I just would like to 
um, introduce the, the, the third strategy about the new industry strategy. The, in this uh, the strategy, uh, third, develop new cultural industry besides visiting tourism. The first one is we, in Pingyang, we have developed the new cultural industry. That means the cultural creative industry and to uh, enhance the cultural space inside the Asian city. The, uh, the approach is to use the uh, planning tools and to change the abandoned uh, industrial uh, factories, for example, the old diesel uh, factories into uh, uh, a cultural space, for example, the, the film palace and the conference center, et cetera, et cetera. So here left, you maybe you can find that the several circles that mean uh, these places have been abandoned because of their, they were the, uh, the empty uh, place or the, uh, the old uh, uh, abandoned uh, uh, industrial uh, factories, etc. Yeah, and uh, so, for example, this picture and uh, to this top two is the diesel, uh, the uh, uh, the diesel engine plant. Yeah, and abandoned site, and now it can be can be transformed as the uh, Pinyang Festival Palace and a community center. And we use the, the, uh, the historical buildings, the factory buildings as the, the uh, film uh, center for the, for the uh, not only for the festival, but also for the daily, daily use, just uh, movie theaters, and also the cultural festivals, exhibitions, and conference. And uh, uh, for that, uh, Based on these uh, reused uh, uh, places in the Asian city and the Pinyang developed the new cultural industry, for example, the International Photograph Festival and activities and film activities and art exhibition activities and other industries. And also to attract the, the artists, the young companies, young peoples, to go to Pinyao to participate in this, this culture event. And so that to ban also to balance the peak season and the low season of the tourist tourism. Here, this is uh, some data uh, uh, of the international uh, film festival in, 19, uh, in 2019. And you can find that uh, uh, about uh, to, uh, 270,000 yeah, participants entered, uh, participate in this in, in festival. So that's uh, a new, uh, new cultural industry. And also as many uh, academic and art, art events, you use this kind of cultural space uh, and to 2019 and we are, uh, Organize the Ecomos Siab and Iskia International Conference in this uh, diesel engine plant. Yeah, it is quite uh, successful. And the second strategy about the tourism and the heritage is uh, in Pingyao is to revitalization of the local intangible cultural heritage. And before, maybe you can find many tourism productions, souvenirs, they came from. Uh, the EU or came from some somewhere. And uh, now little by little, the local government and encourage the local artist, uh, uh, craftsmen to revitalize uh, the local intangible cultural heritage. For example, here you can find the master view. Uh, he is a traditional gold and a silver maker and set up a workshop in his parents' courtyard. This is a traditional courtyard and taking more than a dozen uh, students while wow, taking care of uh, his parents in this courtyard. And these are the young guys and they participate in this, um, 
intangible uh, cultural heritage. And also the show, uh, they have the online shop. Uh, and so maybe it is a very uh, new uh, form of the tourism, uh, not only the tourism, but also the, the intangible cultural heritage productions. Yeah. And uh, this is a master one who is over uh, 50 years old and teaching through online video during the COVID-19 and the design paper uh, cutting themes and techniques. So they have, although she is over 50 years old, but uh, she uh, would like to use the new techniques and the new also creative the new themes and the techniques for the, for the paper cutting. So uh, it is also a very uh, interesting case. And these guys just only in his 30, 30s, returned to his hometown, Pinyang, after completing his master degree to re revitalize the Chinese afternoon tea tradition. Um, he uh, continued to uh, use the uh, traditional techniques and created the green tea. Not green tea, uh, green tea, green tea, yeah. And it is also a very uh, new form. Mm -hmm. And uh, last year we have, uh, I have organized a conference with these young guys, uh, the local uh, craftsmen. And uh, they are very uh, ambitious yes, to, to uh, uh, participate in the tourism industry in Pinyang. And they just want to emphasize the, the creative uh, by themselves and the continuity, continue to, um, uh, you know, to develop the traditional, uh, traditional techniques and the tangible uh, heritage. Uh, for example, these guys yeah, also the uh, cities, and he he uh, used the traditional clay sculpture and um, uh, created the these 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 uh, these two photos about the twelve Chinese dozier anti -epi uh, epidemic uh, he just created for the COVID nineteen. So it is quite interesting. Uh, every time he was creating and he used a web webcast online and every time he will have more than uh, here this um, uh, 200,000 hits. So that's a new, uh, uh, I mean, this is a new, uh, new forces, a very young forces of the uh, heritage conservation inheritance and also the tourism development in Pingyang. Uh, also the, uh, here we can uh, find some creative products from the local handcraft also. And uh, here you can find these two uh, data analysis. Uh, left is overall income of tourism grows stably and rapidly, but this is just showing to uh, 2018. And it is sure that it will be a very uh, big reduce uh, last year. The interesting thing is the percentage, percentage of the tickets of the tourism income, tickets or income is gradually de decreased year by year. That means the, uh, the consumption uh, form of the tourists is not only to buy the tickets or to visit the temples, uh, the monuments, but also they will uh, pay a lot for other uh, tangible and uh, intangible uh, heritage and uh, tourism products. Yeah. So that's uh, the first case that I would like to introduce about Pinyang in the uh, uh, city level. And uh, I continue, uh, Françoise, the second case. The second uh, yes, maybe if you could have just uh, five minutes, is it okay for you? Okay. Because I think both are very, very interesting, but uh, we, we need also time for our discussion. Okay. Second topic is about the natural and cultural heritage based territorial spatial planning and tourism development. 
And here I would mention, I would like to mention two cases. One is the, the South Sangui and the other is the ancient post road of Guangdong. Um, yeah, the, the first one, uh, they are have the, all, almost the same logic. Um, at first, I would like to uh, introduce the regional perspective conservation planning in South Sangui since 2012, yeah. And why we start to think about the regional perspective for the uh, heritage conservation and the tourism development, because of we, because the, uh, we found the, the, the big problem of the elite heritage conservation. Because if we just uh, conserve the listed uh, protected world heritage site, or the villages, or the towns, or the, uh, the monuments, historical buildings. And we found that we will lose a large number of the ordinary heritage. And also this, uh, we will separate the heritage and its cultural uh, background. And we will separate the conservation and the local regional development. Here, I uh, maybe you can see very clearly about the the chief, uh, the chief, uh, the data of the uh, income in different villages in the same cultural area, the South Angui and the city Hongzun. These the two villages was listed in World Heritage uh, uh, site inscribed in in nineteen in two thousand. Yeah, and they have a, a huge uh, visitors every year. Uh, for, for example, the, 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 the right photo uh, shows. And actually in this, the, in this same cultural area, they have many, uh, more than 500 villages, they have the same, uh, almost the same values of historical background, etc. with uh, city and Hongzhou, these two world heritage sites but they just have only very few uh, tourists, visitors every year. So uh, we, and we found that uh, based on this, uh, uh, the, the, all these resources uh, in listed, uh, the protect and listed, and we found that they are the isolated sports. For example, the cities, towns, villages, districts, and also the broken lines, for example, the, the waterways for the ancient post road, they are broken. And also separated practice and the landforms, regional culture, they are not uh, in the, uh, uh, protected or considered at the same level. So after this analysis, and we found that we should uh, we find the logic, inner logic between the natural geographical environment and the evolution of the regional culture and also as well as the resources per, uh, preservation statues and to find the, uh, to, to redefine the character, characterized area based on natural and cultural resources in in South, uh, South Anhui. And the, uh, the idea or the approach is to, uh, to establish a regional conservation framework. That's me to related sports, uh, cities, towns, villages, district, districts, and historical buildings. And con with connected lines, cultural, based on the cultural roots, uh, rivers and ancient post road and to cast it flag, flags. So just from the isolated uh, isolated sports to related sports and to bro from broken lines to connected lines and to the uh, separated uh, plaques and to plastered uh, plaques and to refine the network of natural and cultural resources and its traditional wisdom. So based on this uh, regional perspective conservation uh, plan, 
and uh, so that we can explore the cooperative uh, approach for regional natural and cultural resources conservation and utilization from the competition before to the cooperation uh, in the future. For example, uh, for, in, uh, for one cultural unit and uh, that the provincial government can establish special industry support policy to protect the common agricultural basement or to adjust the traffic organization to avoid improper traffic facilities or to guide the space extension and the industrial development, development to promote cooperation, cooperative cooperations among villages and to help them to uh, establish a union or um, cooperative relationship among the isolated villages, et cetera. Is it your and, conclusion? Yeah. Is it your conclusion, Shao Yong? Uh, yeah, almost, yeah. And uh, so now you maybe you have to establish a long-term mechanism of trans-regional conservation for the for the cultural cluster. Uh, this between two two provinces and the different uh, several counties. Yeah. And the, the ancient post road is, uh, that's why I'd add this part, because when we were working for the theoretical research for the Anhui and the Guangdong have realized uh, one part of these uh, theoretical ideas and, and we can find the very interesting and uh, uh, strong results. Uh, uh, I, I think I, I, I won't uh, uh, introduce in detail the values, but they, here you can find from these pictures about the combination of nature and, and human uh, work. And also the, uh, along this post, around this Asian post road, and you can find the, the, the different settlements uh, in Guangdong, the very diversity uh, heritage. Also, it is ex uh, extensive uh, cultural influence uh, and the wit witness of many important historical process from central China to Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, and Southeast Asia and to global world. But the problem is now these villages before uh, established along this ancient postal, postal road, but now they were they are remote and they are far away from the modern transportation system, the railway, etc. And they now they they are from prosperity to poverty. And the the integrated approach in Guangdong is to uh, to. Uh, redefined also the values of this uh, the poster the Asian post road and to uh, of in conservation revitalization and the tourism and so here you can find the the the, uh, the uh, strategies of Guangdong to combine the natural and cultural tangible tangible and intangible so it is not only nature but also road network network and a cultural node and intangible elements, etc. And to help the, now the, the remote villages into the, uh, the provincial uh, policy. So uh, the Guangdong established Asian road plus sports, Asian road plus culture, plus tourism, plus education, Plus uh, agriculture, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and so the the result is very uh, convenient, uh, very obvious, yeah, to poverty alleviation. The data of the village of the, for example, the in the mountain area now is uh, increased a lot, and the local uh, the tourism of this uh, region is from 
from a uh, long distance and long vacation and just going for the World Heritage sites, the elite uh, sites, now to a short distance and a short holidays and high frequency of the uh, both uh, elite heritage and the uh, vernacular and ordinary heritage sites. Yeah, so that it is a result of very positive uh, after this uh, realization of the regional perspective of conservation and uh, tourism development in quantum and so uh, that's all. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Xiaoyong, for this uh, very inspiriting uh, proposal uh, with the place of uh, poverty, with the place of uh, local inhabitants. I just, I will just uh, uh, let the floor to Hu Lian and uh, Zhang Chunyan, who are both professor in Tianjin University. And maybe you have also present a part of the uh, history of uh, Tianjin from prosperity to uh, poverty because during so many years there is not so many interest to the heritage in Tianjin. Please, Professor Hulian, please, Professor Zhang Chunyan, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, pleasure to have this opportunity. Um, you can hear me, right? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Thanks, uh, Julian. Okay. Um, so today um, we are going to present two case studies in our city, the city of Tianjin. For whom who do, uh, does not know this city is um, 200 kilometers from our capital Beijing in the north of China. So uh, different case cases from uh, Professor Shao and Zhou. So these two cases are... Uh, both in the city of Tianjin. One is um, celebrities' former residence on uh, Wu Da Dao in the center of Tianjin, present, will be presented later by my colleague, Professor Zhang Chunyan. And the other one I will present now is the homestays in Xi Jinyu village. Um, in 2014, um, the national, uh, we have a national policy to um, developed the Jingjingji tourist cycle. Jingjingji means the province of Hebei and capital Beijing and our city Tianjin is um, neighborhoods. So in this cycle, they have provided the uh, facility of um, transport, the uh, discount for the um, tickets. And we also have weekend or short vacation like three days um, for people to travel in this cycle. Uh, I've, under this background, um, we're gonna analyze two cases. One is in the outer north suburb of Tianjin, the city uh, village. The other one is Wudadao area in the center, in the heart of our city. Uh, for the city village is a form from the uh, Qing dynasty. It's an excellent traditional living space. The village is named after its location because it's surrounded by mountains on all sides, shaped as a well. The village has a beautiful nature uh, environment surrounded by hills, granary, plants, and scenery and fresh airs, and is in the center of a national park. And the whole village is built by stone. We can see from the, uh, these photos, there are stone houses, stone courtyards, stone roads, stone terrace, wells, cistern, etc. Um, almost everything is built by stone. So it has a very strong characteristic. Mm -hmm. um, we analyzed that this village has several values. Um, First of all, of course, it has scientific value because it is village of stone over 400 years. And it's a, a very good sample from the old ecological studies. Secondly, it has a historical value, um, specifically in the intangible part because uh, it still has the shadow place. Uh, they still have the place, still have the craftsmen. They still have the straw plain article and the ways of living is very traditional. Um, the art, the um, artistic value, of course, because it's uh, architectural style, it's traditional Qing dynasty uh, dwellings. So um, after this analysis, uh, we can 
um, of course, the national the, uh, the governments want to protect, wants to have pre uh, preservation of this historical and uh, cultural village. So in recent years, um, normally in 2010, it was, it was awarded the title of famous Chinese historical and cultural village by the ministry. And in 2019, uh, the Sijin village was selected as one of the first batch of key village in the national royal tourism list, which means it has strong um, uh, policy support. And uh, for example, in 2009, they have complete the historical and cultural conservation plan for the Sijin village, but it's difficult to implement due to the village collective leadership. And in 2010, the, the local government has leased some of the village's unused character courtyard and stone pavilions, but they have remained vacant due to the um, inability to operate them. So in 2014, one um, um, tourist managed company tried to enter the village to develop as b, &B bread and breakfast, and therefore signed a lease agreement with the town government. So the government tried to um, uh, uh, stimulate the tourism in this village, and they bring a, a managed company in the village. And they do, um, what they did is they open a um, the BNBs, the open bookstores, the open coffees, like everywhere in the whole world. But um, we have to say that uh, almost 50% of the villagers have not tried what is coffee. So open a coffee shop there is not very attractive to the uh, habitant. So, um, but the try, but experiment is good because they have a publication. They have um, public in this village in the national scale. So people know about this village since 2014 and the tourism developed since then. But um, there are also conflicts between the external, external capital transformation and the village interest because of course the, company, the uh, tourism managed company will have cut um, some percent of the income from the tourist. So the uh, villager have lower income, um, lower than their uh, expectation. And there are also conflict between the preferred BNB and the village owned business, which means the uh, government, because they sign lease with the company, uh, tourist company, they only do publication, do advertisement for the preferred BNB and not for the uh, villagers own business. So there's a conflict uh, remains. But after that, they have a adjustment adjustment like um, the improved infrastructure and build the public toilets in the whole uh, village. And they transform the stone square, the center square in the center of the village into an activity place for villagers as a place for tourists to enjoy. So they're trying to do something as the village is a whole pack. It's not only for the several BNB signed by governments, but also the whole village. They also implement a complete visual identity system. They design um, to incorporate the characteristic of each family into the overall environment. Mm -hmm. yeah. They also uh, simplify the regulation for village to build their own home and update the village's knowledge and value system to enhance their sense of identity with the village. They also set up traditional cultural um, recreational activities in CGU. For example, um, they, we list some of the activities. For example, they have social works, um, they bring up village lecture halls, they have um, landscape design for the whole village, they have uh, markets uh, market in the evening for the uh, tourists. They also have the uh, like photographic competition, et cetera, et cetera. So all these activities attract uh, tourists to this village. And since it is in, on the uh, outer north of the, the city, people choose to stay there. So um, as a result, after the renovation from uh, 2015, within three years, um, this is a statistic in 2018, the average annual visitors increased from 
30,000 to 180,000. The income of, of villagers increased also. The annual income of the family increased from about 25,000 yuan to about 155,000 yuan, which greatly increased euro income. So for the composition of visitor, we can see that the um, most visitors take CGE as a place to spend their weekend vacation with family, the taking family, and they will come again and again after the first try. So uh, we also analyze the values of the CGE village. We can see since 2015, the income of the ma uh, manager, tourist manager company and um, the particip participate of the uh, villagers, the, the value has increased, um, uh, obviously. And we have a map of the village of Sijin here, and all the red spots are BNBs or uh, feature spots. So we can see whole village is open for the tourists. And um, at last, I would like to tell a little story about a mister, a master, uh, Mr. Joe. He is a leading craftsman in the art of dry masonry, built the village and transformed his own home. The home, the BNB caused two jingles trees. The, he transformed it into the more, uh, one of the more successful bed and breakfast in the village. The story is he has a son who went to university in other cities, but come back to the uh, hometown to run this BNB after his graduation. So this is a typical um, example for how the village attract young people to return to their hometown. And as a conclusion, we can see from this example that the um, we have a village with cultural value, with characteristic. And upside, the government want to um, bring the self-identification uh, to the villagers, to bring opportunity, to bring the advertisement to this village. So how, the whole thing stimulates the value to, value to participate of the villager. So they bring up better product to stimulate more um, tourists. And this part is from the bottom up. So um, this, example we can see is a common nice with upside down and bottom up. Um, the second uh, case study will lead to Mr. Zhao. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, okay. okay, thanks. <laughs> Okay, okay, thanks. Uh, Tianjin is a city fostered by water transportation and uh, commercial activities. Wudado area was formed in the 1930s along with the urban development of Tianjin. At the time, part of Tianjin became a concession of nine countries. Architecture with various cells was built at the time. The, the architecture has a unique form and uh, character, which uh, combines Chinese and uh, Western features. This area became a community of uh, famous people, making this area even more meaningful to Chinese modern history. After 1949, the area was uh, transformed into a communal living space of old. Since then, Udado is also regarded uh, as an appearance of Tianjin folk culture. Since the 2000s, Tianjin historical architecture restora restoration and uh, development uh, limit company, THARD, was uh, formed through the administrative process together with the uh, hoping to track the government, led the development uh, of tourism uh, and uh, the protection of historical buildings. Functions of historical buildings changed uh, differently, such as uh, tourism size, restaurants and uh, bars, office space and uh, private living space. However, because of the complicated land uh, in entitlements, over 70% of space remain office and living space. 
which are not open to tourists. In 2014, a documentary called Udada Awards broadcast nationwide. The Amazing Urban Image Awards celebrate leading a trend of visiting the district. However, problems emerge as tourism opportunities uh, seem to go. Udada has a good image, yet not well advertised on new media. The lack of uh, distinctive tourism image and uh, attractive cultural and uh, creative products makes it difficult to leave a lasting impression on visitors when they leave Udada. The results for this problem are difficult to determine. In order to respond to the problem, different attempts have been taken place. For example, the Qingwang place, which was transformed in the development led by THARD. It was qualified as an urban cultural and relic club, combining luxury hotels and cut edge paths. Qingwang place has become a symbol of high end consumption. The Xianlong Carriad nevertheless tried to create another atmosphere of cultural and creativity. The local government organized the creative markets to attract tourists and encourage individual design studios to settle in. The Mingyuan Stadium also developed by THARD has two mixed images. The carrier was designed to open to the public, making itself a symbolic lecture space of Tianjin. On the other hand, the building around the carrier can contain nightclub, cafe, and import good supermarkets. A different story is Jiu Guo B and B, a business developed by several students from the Architecture School of Tianjin University. They were renting different spaces in the district and transforming them into B and B. They are good at the publication themselves on social media, and they chose to decorate their B and B using popular trends. The price of a BNB is not expensive. The demand, the, the demand of the market is more than enough. So they are getting success and uh, expanding one after another. Also, the top down the developments may be regarded as successful in their beautiful publications. However, people still could not involve in the history of the area because these spaces are separated yet expensive. The up-down approach can only partly agree with the needs of tourists. On the other hand, the bottom-up approach agrees with the market and could better a successful model. It is a useful attempt. Policies should become more flexible to allow different attempts to happen and allow different opportunities to be carried out. A diverse management method needs to be introduced to ensure the healthy development of tourism. The sustainable model calls for us to integrate these pros and cons and develop a Diverse dynamic management, management uh, methodology and uh, preserve the memory of a place. Nevertheless, Udada still has a mixed image. What should be the suitable treatment for Udada to balance tourism development and uh, social harmony? The question can still be open to discussion. Now, Julian, continue to finish our presentation. Thank you. Um, yes, we have a conclusion. Oh, general conclusion. Oh.
Yes, we have a conclusion. As um, we think after these two case studies, we think that tourism is a totally personal cho choice. People can choose where we go, how we go, how I stay. So uh, a bottom-up system involved more personal touch. They have more creativity from the personal. Uh, so we think that the local policy should adjust time to time to support changing demands from tourists and stimulate willing to participate from owner or residents or the people participate, motivate their creativity and attract more tourism. That's all, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Julien and Julien. Uh, uh, I suggest we could take uh, 10 minutes for question, if you mm. agree. There is one question for uh, Professor Jotien. I don't know if you hear us. There is one question about uh, biodiversity and what about, the, or do you take oh. into account this uh, uh, need for biodiversity in your project? Uh, sorry, uh, share. Uh, yeah. What about the university? <laughs> sorry. Uh, there is a question in the chat. Uh, it's um, oh. about your very interesting uh, proposal about uh, transformation of the wool place and strategy according oh. to the natural and cultural resource. And do you oh. have also specific plan for biodiversity for animals and so on? Uh, uh, for university, Tonti University, as you know, just for in the urban planning area and uh, for the heritage conservation area planning uh, in the China uh, university, Chinese university is the top level. So a uh, lot of the, the new project uh, we did uh, in past uh, two or three years, but especially in past uh, two or three years, uh, our uh, because the, the the central government and the uh, national strategy is is changed a lot, uh, more care about the, the heritage conservation and ecological uh, environment. So uh, for us, the challenges is to how to uh, use the new approach uh, to integrate the the, the different uh, the, the, the aspects uh, together in the the special uh, the terri uh, territory uh, uh, planning uh, for the special planning. So is this for us, uh, uh, for the university, for the Tongji University, for the urban planning, uh, the, the, the studies is a big challenges. So uh, from the, the uh, 19, uh, 2018, uh, we uh, beginning to, to join, join or participating the, the Xiong'an's new area uh, open planning. And uh, in this uh, plan, uh, we know and we think about and even research a lot of the it's a new approach. A new approach not only for the conservation, but also the development. Uh, even, for example, the, the green transportation and the green uh, uh, the, the water uh, uh, the, the pollution. Uh, uh, the, 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 uh, and uh, the, um, the new system of the, the building construction, something like this. Okay. Mm. okay, thank you. I saw there is a question from uh, uh, Xiao Mengsi. Xiao Mengsi, do you want to ask your question? Yeah, sure. Thank you. So I, I uh, thank you for the presentation, which is really interesting. Uh, and I have two questions. One is for Professor Xiao Yong. The other is for Professor uh, Zhang Guang Yan and uh, Lian, Hu, Lian Hu. Sorry. Uh, so the first question is very simple because I saw that there was a questionnaire conducted for the uh, conservation for uh, Pingyao for the tourism development and heritage conservation. Uh, and I see that there are uh, some groups, um, some participants being categorized. One is heritage community, the other is the stakeholder. Uh, so I wonder why we do these kind of categorize, because I see many uh, 
uh, documentaries from the international uh, from UNESCO. It says like uh, local community, including uh, generally speaking heritage communities, are same defined as the stakeholders because stakeholders include local community as well. So I wonder why we do this kind of uh, separation. Not yeah. Separated. And the second question is, because um, it's very interesting to see the uh, top-down policy implementation and the policy making is actually challenged by the bottom-up approaches. So I wonder to, because I mean, we know that China is doing a hierarchical administration for heritage conservation and urban development. So, so, so I wonder to, to what extent uh, you think uh, the bottom-up approaches uh, would be, uh, how can I say, um, in the value appropriation process can against the uh, existing hierarchical administration in China right now? So that's my two questions. Thank you. Uh, I should answer now or later? Yeah, yes, please. Okay, thank you, uh, thank you, Mrs. Sh uh, Shao. Is <laughs> thank you for uh, for your questions. Yeah, uh, I would like to say that why we uh, just uh, divide uh, the into three categories: one is stakeholders, and second is heritage uh, community, uh, because uh, based uh, because of their uh, based on their you know, their the questionnaires and the interviews face-to-face uh, -face in the Asian city. And we find that many, uh, now the uh, structure of the, of the social, the society of this Asian city now is more complicated uh, than before. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, the stakeholders, maybe he is uh, his owner, the, the original owner of the of these uh, historical buildings, but maybe he is an uh, investor. You know, the investor. He maybe he has bought uh, he has bought the uh, 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 buildings, but he is not living in the in the city. So when we want to manage these uh, historical buildings, the facade, or the uh, to give some. Uh, Guide or to uh, to conserve the, uh, the the heritage, and we have to uh, cooperate it with the stakeholders. So here, the stakeholders maybe uh, some of the stakeholders is not the inhabitants of the local community. That's why we just uh, divided the, <laughs> separated these two categories. Yeah, just based on the uh, on site. Uh, investigation, so, not because of the doctrines of the office. Let's go. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, may I just interject here? Because I would like uh, you to look at um, the uh, records of uh, the policy. There were three policy recommendation um, webinars. And this aspect of analyzing the local community was very much an issue because as uh, uh, Professor Xiaoyong said, the local community is not uniform at all. There are many, many diverse groups of local uh, communities with very big conflicting interest. So uh, although we talk about multi-stakeholder planning processes, you know, including local communities, we need to have a much more precise analysis of what the local community is. And in that respect, I really understand uh, what uh, Professor Xiaoyong did, because it really looks, it's, it's a very, I mean, both, uh, um, all three rec uh, presentations were really excellent. I mean, honestly, it's excellent because the data was there, the research was there. And it's too bad. I mean, we can devote the one webinar for each of these uh, projects, you know, yeah. but it's really very enriching. And I really uh, congratulate all of you because I think that uh, the, um, uh, Professor uh, Zhu Zhang's presentation really showed the huge scale of China. 
and how, because with the large number of population, the huge scale, you have to have a very centralized planning system in a way that combines tourism, that combines agriculture, that combines forestry. And I think that it's really, um, you know, uh, and, and, and as the other presentations showed, within the framework of this big top-down approach, there are opportunities emerging now more and more of bottom-up um, uh, uh, solutions and, and how these two can actually be a very good synergy. Um, uh, but uh, uh, Francoise, we have very little time now for the French yeah, presentation. Very thing. little time. Yeah, so, yeah, so maybe so to discuss, but yeah. Mm -hmm. I suggest for other people who have questions to put in the chat yeah. and uh, we could also use this way. Because um, French cases are also very interesting. Very interesting so please, yeah. Roger Bataille, could you introduce what happened in the rural area where nobody wants to go? And how, to, how do you think about economic, tourism, and development, and sure, how to protect the resorts? So please, uh, Roger, the floor is yours. And uh, Emily, could you just share the screen? And for the, um, uh, Roger will speak in French, but for the Chinese participants, there will be in the chat the, the exchange, the, the, um, the presentation in Chinese, briefly. So Roger and Emily, thanks for your cooperation. Merci Françoise. Tout d'abord, je voudrais saluer tous mes amis chinois. Je suis ravi de, que nous puissions nous retrouver ce matin. Et merci beaucoup à, à Jotian et, et à Shaoyong de m'avoir fait à nouveau voyager dans les villes d'eau du delta du Yangtze et à Pingyayo, que j'avais particulièrement apprécié. Est-ce que vous m'entendez bien Oui, très bien. Okay. Émilie traduit, je, je n'entends pas le... Non, il le, n'y le, a pas de traduction, tu peux continuer je directement peux continuer. en français. Très bien. Donc ce matin, je veux vous présenter euh, le cas d'une petite cité de caractère qui est Irville-Châtel, dont j'ai le bonheur d'être le maire, et qui est un exemple euh, euh, de revitalisation selon une chronologie, une stratégie que nous avons mise en place il y a maintenant 12 ans. Pourquoi cette euh, revitalisation Tout simplement parce que, comme de nombreuses petites villes euh, rurales, euh, Erwin Châtel a subi, euh, depuis la révolution industrielle du 19e siècle jusqu'à aujourd'hui, euh, la centralisation euh, croissante des activités humaines dans les métropoles urbaines. Ce phénomène a généré une modification de l'aménagement du territoire, mais également provoqué une certaine désertification des campagnes. Les petites villes comme Herville-Châtel se sont regroupées au sein d'une association qui s'appelle les Petites Cités de Caractère de France, qui sont des petites villes qui s'organisent pour inverser cette tendance en s'appuyant sur la valorisation de leur héritage patrimonial et la mise en œuvre d'expériences et de projets innovants. Alors tout d'abord, vous situez Erville-Châtel, euh, si on peut voir cette carte de France, Émilie, Erville-Châtel se trouve au sud-est de Paris, à environ 180 km, à 40 km de ville moyenne, et c'est un positionnement intéressant parce que ça veut dire qu'elle euh, n'est pas soumise à une attractivité pour ses activités quotidiennes et qu'elle a une certaine raison de pouvoir les, euh, les recueillir, les, les conserver dans, dans sa cité. Elle se trouve euh, à la rencontre de deux fameuses régions viticoles hein, qui sont la Bourgogne et la Champagne, ce qui donne une certaine qualité de vie, bien évidemment. Et puis, elle se situe également dans un paysage euh, agricole et forestier. Connaître euh, la situation, comprendre la situation d'Herville-Châtel aujourd'hui euh, nécessite d'avoir un regard sur son histoire. 
Cette petite ville est située sur une colline euh, et c'est un lieu d'habitat depuis environ 1000 ans. Au Moyen-Âge, euh, c'était un château fort euh, fortifié euh, euh, à partir du XVIe siècle, du XVe siècle, elle a euh, joué une, un rôle très important euh, dans la défense de toute une province qui était la province de Champagne, province de Champagne qui euh, assurait euh, la défense également du royaume de France. À cette époque, la Champagne accueillait des foires qui étaient un haut lieu d'échange, de commerce entre les riches marchands venant des quatre coins de l'Europe. Et c'est grâce à ces marchands qui venaient du sud, de l'Italie, de l'Espagne, qui faisaient une halte à Erville-Châtel, que la cité médiévale a connu la prospérité à cette période de fin de guerre de Cent Ans, euh, c'est-à-dire au XVe siècle et début du XVIe siècle. Cette période, c'est également celle d'un grand courant artistique venu d'Italie, la Renaissance. Et le patrimoine le plus remarquable d'Herville Châtel est issu de cette période. L'architecture de l'Église, ses décors polychromes, sa statuaire et ses verrières, sont le témoignage de l'influence italienne de la Renaissance. Partant de ce constat historique, patrimonial, la question qui s'est posée à la nouvelle équipe municipale il y a 12 ans était très simple, comment nous pouvons revitaliser Herville Châtel Alors pendant de, deux années, les élus et un groupe d'experts de l'économie, du tourisme, des urbanistes, des architectes, des paysagistes, nous avons dressé un diagnostic, constaté les atouts, les faiblesses, examiné euh, tout cela par rapport au territoire dans lequel se, trouvait, euh, se trouve la commune, et puis nous avons élaboré un projet, défini sa faisabilité financière et sa mise en œuvre dans le cadre d'une programmation pluriannuelle. Ce projet était constitué de trois étapes, trois étapes importantes, dont la première était la restauration et la valorisation du bâti monumental. Ce bâti monumental, il constitue la principale richesse historique de la cité. Et pourquoi l'avoir choisi Parce que nous avons pensé que sa restauration apporterait un regard nouveau sur la ville, un regard nouveau de l'extérieur, mais aussi un regard nouveau des habitants vers leur héritage patrimonial. Et en effet, cette première étape a permis de révéler non seulement la sensibilisation des, des habitants pour leur patrimoine, mais aussi de révéler un patrimoine exceptionnel qui existait dans la cité, qui est le patrimoine formé par des vitraux dans l'église, cet art verrié de la Renaissance qui, à herville chapelle est particulièrement original et unique par sa qualité artistique. Les représentations qui existent sont effectivement uniques en France et font l'objet de nombreuses recherches à la fois artistiques mais également historiques. Cette affirmation de l'identité patrimoniale de la cité en considérant le vitrail comme fil conducteur de l'ensemble du projet de revitalisation. En effet, de nombreuses cités ont un patrimoine remarquable, de très grande qualité, et il était intéressant pour nous de découvrir quelle était la particularité et d'en faire le marqueur, l'identification forte de la démarche que nous allions euh, engager. Et cette démarche s'est concrétisée par euh, plusieurs réalisations. Euh, la première, en, en 2015, a été euh, la réhabilitation euh, de l'ancienne prison qui datait du, euh, du début du 19e siècle, qui a trouvé un nouvel usage. Elle est devenue euh, ce que nous appelons la maison du vitrail, c'est-à-dire un lieu d'interprétation, de découverte, un lieu pédagogique un lieu d'exposition pour expliquer ce qu'est le vitrail et ce qu'il a pu apporter au fil des siècles et encore aujourd'hui dans notre cité. 
La deuxième étape euh, du projet a été la création d'ateliers pour accueillir euh, des maîtres verriers, des artisans, des métiers d'art du vitrail. En effet, euh, nous voulions faire la démonstration que cet art, ces métiers d'art étaient encore tout à fait des métiers d'actualité et qu'ils pouvaient être générateurs non seulement d'une découverte touristique de ces métiers, mais également d'une économie. Et enfin, euh, euh, troisième opération euh, que nous avons mise en œuvre euh, et que nous continuons évidemment à développer, c'est la réalisation d'expositions artistiques, de démonstrations des artisans d'art, la réalisation d'ateliers créatifs destinés à du public jeune, mais également à, à, à tout public, et puis euh, des créations contemporaines. Nous avons voulu faire la démonstration que cet art verrier euh, euh, avait encore aujourd'hui un certain nombre d'artistes, d'artisans d'art qui ont donné lieu à des créations contemporaines qui, qui ont été mises en œuvre et réalisées euh, ces dernières années. Et puis évidemment, euh, il s'agissait également... Euh, de nourrir euh, la connaissance, de nourrir la curiosité du public à travers un certain nombre de conférences euh, pour que, euh, à travers l'ensemble de ces manifestations, nos habitants, mais un large public, s'approprient ce patrimoine verrier. Nous pouvons voir peut-être, Émilie, euh, ces créations contemporaines dans euh, l'image suivante. Merci. Là, on voit l'exemple d'exposition, de création artistique, de création de, 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 de vitraux, hein, qui sont un vitrail comme celui que vous voyez ici, est un élément qui fait 6 mètres de largeur sur 4 mètres de hauteur. Donc, on est dans des mises en œuvre dans, dans, dans un bâtiment de la Renaissance, mais d'œuvres très contemporaines et qui font la démonstration que cet art est un art vivant et que c'est un art qui... Euh, fait appel à, à de grandes créations et à des artistes aujourd'hui et qui, euh, mis en œuvre dans notre cité, ont permis à nos habitants de découvrir quelle était cette grande richesse et euh, les rendre fiers de, de ce patrimoine. Une fois que nous avons achevé la euh, restauration, la valorisation de ce bâti monumental, la deuxième étape, consistait à créer l'écrin pour les valoriser. Et cet écrin, c'est la requalification des espaces publics. Ces espaces publics, il s'agit bien entendu des rues, des ruelles, des places, de manière à ce que nous puissions aussi créer un cadre pour la qualité de vie des habitants, qui soit un cadre plus agréable, c'est la création de jardins. C'est aussi la mise en place de nombreuses manifestations populaires, festives, culturelles. C'est ça la vie de l'espace public pour nous. Et euh, c'est également une manière, euh, encore une fois, de faire en sorte que les habitants s'approprient complètement l'espace de la cité, un espace de la cité valorisé et valorisé pour eux. Nous avons constaté que euh, toutes ces démarches, ces deux premières étapes, et en particulier la deuxième, avait généré une nouvelle dynamique. Cette nouvelle dynamique, elle s'est manifestée euh, d'une part par l'arrivée de euh, nouvelles activités économiques dans la ville, mais aussi par euh, l'envie euh, de nombreux habitants de participer à ces démarches de valorisation du patrimoine en restaurant leurs bâtiments, en... Euh, donnant à nouveau des habitats pour euh, euh, de nouveaux habitants, des bâtiments qui n'étaient plus habités depuis des années, ont retrouvé une nouvelle vie, euh, en restaurant euh, leur commerce, en euh, participant au fleurissement et au paysagement de la commune. Bref, tout un élan euh, euh, qui, euh, finalement, est, est, est probablement euh, le, le résultat de cette démarche, qui peut-être au départ a été très non pas bottom-up, mais plutôt l'inverse. Il faut le reconnaître. Nous avons plutôt cherché à euh, créer un impact, une réaction positive près de nos habitants en leur montrant quel était le potentiel de la cité. Et euh, ces dernières années, nous avons vu que la démarche pouvait prendre une autre, un autre sens 
Et euh, cette participation des habitants nous permet aujourd'hui de les faire partager totalement la troisième étape du projet. Et euh, c'est véritablement euh, l'émergence d'une nouvelle méthode qui s'offre désormais à nous. Cette troisième étape que nous abordons euh, maintenant, c'est celle qui va consister à renforcer l'attractivité de la cité. En effet, jusqu'à présent, euh, il a été intéressant euh, de euh, maintenir les habitants, de maintenir, voire développer des activités, mais notre objectif est évidemment plus ambitieux. Nous voulons que euh, la commune soit un lieu de vie choisi, que nous puissions accueillir de nouvelles familles, de nouveaux habitants, de nouvelles activités, de nouveaux services. Et pour cela, euh, une nouvelle stratégie est en train de se mettre en place. La première, c'est la méthode. La méthode euh, va consister à associer tous les habitants, qu'ils soient acteurs de la cité ou simplement euh, des habitants, et quel que soit leur âge. Quel que soit leur âge, parce que nous allons euh, impliquer les jeunes, les jeunes des écoles, et nous allons impliquer euh, les personnes les plus âgées de la cité. Qu'est-ce qu'ils aimeraient euh, trouver demain dans leur vie Comment ils aimeraient la faire évoluer Comment nous pouvons accueillir de nouvelles familles venant de la ville Comment nous pouvons développer de nouvelles activités culturelles quelles sont leurs attentes C'est un grand débat qui va s'ouvrir, que nous sommes en train de mettre en place, accompagné d'experts, d'experts du tourisme, d'experts de l'économie, d'experts de l'architecture, d'experts de la conservation du patrimoine, d'experts des nouvelles technologies également. Pourquoi les nouvelles technologies Parce que nous voyons bien, euh, et la, la, la situation que nous, que nous rencontrons aujourd'hui, à travers cette, cette crise sanitaire, nous montre combien euh, euh, la, la vie rurale euh, peut apporter de nombreuses réponses. Ces réponses, c'est euh, offrir des espaces de vie, des espaces de vie de qualité. Je tiens à nous parler dans les, delta, dans les villes du Delta de cette trame verte et bleue, dont, qui, qui est aussi une démarche euh, extrêmement importante en France, comment effectivement nous pouvons préserver les paysages et offrir des, un cadre de vie qui réponde aux aspirations euh, des familles, aux aspirations euh, de tous les habitants et à la sensibilisation également euh, des urbains. Comment nous pouvons euh, créer aujourd'hui dans nos petites villes rurales euh, des espaces euh, qui répondent et qui sont équipés de tout ce que les technologies du numérique nous apportent aujourd'hui. Tout d'abord, être des villes que je vais appeler connectées, c'est-à-dire en capacité d'accueillir du télétravail, en capacité de pouvoir faire en sorte que les personnes qui viennent travailler dans les villes rurales puissent être en connexion avec leur société, qu'elles soient à Paris, dans les grandes villes ou ailleurs. Comment nous allons pouvoir adapter de nouvelles technologies très innovantes, par exemple pour accueillir des personnes âgées, autonomes, mais en situation de fragilité, dans des espaces de vie complètement connectés Il y a aujourd'hui, grâce à la silver technology, des espaces de vie extrêmement sécurisés et nous sommes en train de réfléchir à la mise en place d'habitats de ce type dans notre commune. Comment nous allons associer des étudiants à cette réflexion et comment nous pouvons accueillir des étudiants pour des recherches architecturales, pour des recherches sur les nouvelles technologies, pour les recherches sur euh, 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 des recherches archéologiques, c'est un, un vrai sujet aussi chez nous, euh, sur euh, les espaces culturels. Vous avez remarqué qu'à la fois le vitrail, mais pas que le vitrail, c'est l'objet de préoccupation culturelle aujourd'hui. Nous avons euh, notamment avec euh, cette sensibilisation et cette, euh, cette appartenance à ce grand mouvement de la Renaissance italienne, nous avons un projet qui est en train d'émerger avec des, des musiciens spécialistes de la musique de la Renaissance et 
nous sommes en train d'évoquer, d'étudier la possibilité euh, de résidence pour des artistes. Donc, Roger oui. Je te demandais d'aller à la conclusion parce que euh, on a un peu dépassé le temps et je voudrais avoir très bien, euh, très bien, François. Parler, Alain. Excuse-moi de cette voilà. intention. Euh, donc voilà toute cette réflexion que nous sommes en train d'engager pour faire de notre euh, petite commune qui s'appuie sur son héritage de siècles passés une petite cité du XXIe siècle. Et j'ajouterai pour conclure que l'ensemble de ce projet de revitalisation s'inscrit complètement dans la démarche qui est définie par la charte et le concept des petites cités de caractère de France. Merci beaucoup pour votre attention. Thanks a lot, uh, Roger. And I would like, excuse me for uh, just with so fascinating uh, presentation, I would let the floor directly to Alain Marinos because we have already a lot of people who are going out and we are just in this uh, most important things or to have both bottom up and top down regulatory and administrative framework as Minja suggests. Alain, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, François. Well, I will go uh, directly to the subject. Uh, my presentation is, uh, well, directly, uh, um, well, is to make this, how to make the city attractive. Uh, to try to answer to this question, I present two examples of integrated approaches, which introduce new processes of, of, of urban planning and management, uh, closer to the inhabitants, as you see in the other presentation, associating cultural, natural, and intangible heritage, tourism, and environmental quality. The, the two cities give given uh, as examples have uh, a very different scales. Both are located in the extreme west of France. They are the metropole of Brest, Zhou Tian and Xiaoyong, new uh, knew it at the beginning uh, of, co of our cooperation 20 years ago, uh, as St. Francois. Uh, and the small city of Pont-Croix, so Brest and Pont-Croix. I will start, start with Brest. Brest is a metropole of 210,000 inhabitants in a living area about Uh, 400,000 uh, uh, inhabitants uh, located in the region of Brittany near the sea and in a, a craggy, uh, steep uh, um, landscape, uh, opening uh, nice perspectives on the, on the landscape, uh, opening up. And uh, as you, as you, Brest City Center was uh, totally demolished the year 1940 during the last world, world war, uh, as you can see on the black and white uh, uh, image. For a long time, the rebuilt city, you can uh, see the, the view here, suffered from a bad city image, showing a rigid city planning without soul and charm, said people. But, Uh, look, comment on fait? Voilà. But at the end of the year 1990, the Metropole of Brest reacted to this bad image. The Metropole launched studies to define what make Brest heritage. What? We, we, don't, we don't have many old monuments because uh, it was uh, demolished, the center of town was demolished. Uh, to better understand and make its cultural and natural heritage recognized by, by inhabitants and by visitors alike. For example, those documents you can see present urban walk, itiner itineraries of urban discoveries. They are uh, organized by the tourist office to know the city well. Those urban walks are proposed to tourists as well as to inhabitants shopkeepers, administration, association, and so on. This is very important. Its particular patrimonial assets were used as basic for the planning study of the city center. To know the heritage, heritages 
well to better plan to better plan the city. Shouldn't it be an evidence? It would be. In this way, the metropole then engages it itself in partnership with the architect des bâtiments de France, uh, the local uh, state expert, uh, into an original study and planning process. The urban planning expert has the task of keeping in touch with residents' association in a various district of the city center. You can see uh, the, the, the various district of the city center here. Combine bottom-up and top-down ways. The very existence of city center district that you see delimited here was not recognized in the previous urban planning documents. Their architectural and urban identity, the identity of the inhabitants who refer to them are today inscribed in the urban process. And it, it's totally, it's, it's, it becomes a totally different approach. The, um, the, architecture, the, uh, the architect and town planner then synthesized their work on this great plan uh, you can see extract on, 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 the, on the right and the great plan on the left. Uh, the common uh, definition of heritage uh, by uh, uh, the common definition of heritage properties by expert and resident association revealed three levels of interest. Three levels you can see uh, on those extracts of the, of the big, big plan. First level of interest for the perspective and the landscape, materialized by arrow and cones of view you can see on the plan, the arrows and cones of view. Third, uh, second level for the interesting public space, you can see in pink uh, on, on the extract of the map. And the third level for monument, quality building, and architectural group colored uh, on the plan according to the period of construction. Those in green are relatively recent from the 20th uh, uh, century. Landscape, public space, group of building, Three scales of heritage, which, which combine, are the basic of planning. There are some, uh, here are some images of the result obtained nearly 20 years after the implementation of the plan. Many building and group of building have been restored and revitalized, even the more ordinary one, uh, and socializing too. Favor, um, the, the new equipment building and uh, layout of public spaces that respects the existing built heritage and the city emblematic landscapes for a better quality of life of residents, quality of life for residents. <laughs> Favoring the restoration of building, the examples of the Atelier des Capucins. The Atelier des Capucins were 19th century building of uh, the military arsenal of Brest. They were converted into a cultural and commercial center. 5,000 uh, square meters of commercial and service space. Uh, and the, ma the machinery square in, in the center of the building because become the covered hole with an area of 10,000 square meters. It's a very, very interesting rehabilitation and it works very well. The city could demolish it because it was in ruins, but they decide not to build another new building, but to keep it. It's, um, it's a cultural and ecological approach. Um, the inclusion of new building in this landscape respect the perspective and the corner view of distant view you could see on the plan. The new building project was forced to respect the plan and to respect then the viewpoint and cone identified in this plan. <laughs> you don't have high buildings or, <laughs> you know, you know what's, uh, what I mean. 
This exemplary approach carried out in Brest has inspired Chinese and urban planners. Professor Xiaoyong, uh, I, I, I appreciate very much uh, Zhu Tian and Xiaoyong uh, presentation. And I just, re just remember Professor Xiaoyong, uh, uh, you, you have listened previously, refers to, uh, to it in a doctoral thesis. You can see here an extract. <laughs> Professor Zhu Tian, uh, you, you also have listened uh, previously, uh, with the participation of uh, Mrs. Shanghai, was inspired by it to plan Anxing Fushing District in 2004, the first heritage protection and indensement plan of Shanghai Metropole. I would like here to salute and, and thanks Professor Zhu Tian and Professor Xiaoyong and their team, with whom we have been cooperating for more than 20 years now and who have offered me a, a very um, inspiring and enriching exchange of no-no. The approach initiated in Brest was presented uh, as an example in several countries, in Bulgaria, in the bottom of the slide, as well as the World Urban Forum in Rio de Janeiro here in 2010, Today, almost 20 years after the first study, the plan has been enriched and updated. These different new documents are easily accessible from the address, uh, those internet address you can see uh, on, on the slide. Brest has become a relatively attractive city uh, and even a touristic destination. It was not before at all. Uh, as shown on this map, I, I can explain that you see breast, uh, the, the color points means breast become uh, uh, um, an attractive city uh, for tourists. Uh, breast has even recently joined the prestigious network of Ville Pays d'Histoire, the French network of heritage cities, and breast now appears in the specialist uh, heritage press. Well, Let's now move to Ponghua, an example also located in the Brittany region, but totally different because Ponghua is a very, very small city. How to make it attractive? It's a very small city of 1,580 inhabitants in a living area of 21,000 uh, inhabitants, far from the big urban center. Uh, at uh, at the every at the very end of Europe. Um, oh, sorry. The the, the, exam, the exemplary action carried out uh, in Ponghua I mainly due to the current mayor of Ponghua, Benoit Lorieux, and his municipal team. Their main objective is clear: how to make the city attractive and then more lifeful. To do so, they have made revitalization of the city in the center of their priority, considering that, I quote, the heritage of the commune must become a lever for development as much social, as economic, as cultural, as envir uh, environmental. You can see it, some uh, pictures of uh, cultural heritage of Pongroi. Pongroi was the capital of a nation Breton country called Cap Cizan. And this is some picture of natural uh, heritage. As, uh, as in Brest, the approach taken by the previous Maya was to study the heritage in order to better plan the city. To study the heritage in order to better plan the city. But the current Maya and his team have gone further they have engaged the commune in networks that go far beyond the communi communal boundaries. The first is to better assert itself in the immediate environment, environment particularly, particularly within the community of communes through various planning schemes, plan local d'urbanisme, schéma de cohérence territoriale, and so on. I don't have time to, to explain you. 
Pongroa uh, has uh, taken a leading position within the association of the Petit Cité de Caractère, whose uh, vice president, Roger Bataille, has explained the principle, the stakes and the objectives. Also through, uh, through uh, the association of Cité, uh, Cité d'Art de Bretagne. Anyway, to association of uh, heritage cities. But Pongroa has uh, also recently joined the network of the route of Santiago de Compostela. Uh, just the city has shown uh, and highlighted that it was an important starting point of the pilgr pilgrimage from the port and the extreme west of France. Pongroa was selected in, in um, uh, 2019 uh, to take part in a national television program, which consists in uh, electing the village préféré des Français, the favorite village of the French, electing by viewers from all over the country, uh, elected from their um, elected. Pongra was elected for uh, their cultural, natural, material, intangible uh, heritage, which make uh, the quality of life in the in the city. That. That year, in uh, 2019, uh, Pongroix was elected as the second favorite village of the French, and thus joined the natural network established since 2012. But the most impressive and efficient operation carried out by Benoit Lorieux, consisting in grouping new equipment and attractive and activities, sorry, in a 19th century vast religious building of nearly 10,000 square meters left abandoned in the city center. An important part of this building called the Petit Seminaire was in ruins some years ago, five years ago maybe. And healthy, many inhabitants wanted to demolish it. But the bear begins, begins to think and, and finding public and private financing for its acquisition and rehabilitation. Then he offered available floor space for installation of new facilities, including a media li library, a private medical house, gastronomic restaurant, for an entire living area and even beyond. He did not hesitate to refuse, this is very important, he did not hesitate to refuse building permit for medical house on the outskirts of the city to convince health professionals to group together in the Petit Seminaire, in the city center, in the, in the real city center. To, the, to today, this medical house has more than doubled. It grouped together more than a dozen health professionals. It is, it is many for, for a, a, such a, a little village. I'm, of course, referring to the development, uh, sorry. The strategy for revitalization of the city center is remarkably effective. You can see it. The first part was in white here. Restore the, the uh, medical house. And this is how it is now. And it's, it's in, in the way to be uh, totally restored. On the, one, um, one of the major object, objectives today should be to host a third place, a co-working place, combination of uh, vacation and, uh, uh, pardon, sorry, a co-workation place, combination of vacation and work uh, via internet. Like here in the Nebo, Nebo, neighboring town of Odiam. The objective will be to welcome young, young remote workers, teleworkers in a pleasant city to live and thus take advantage of movement uh, that are developing more and more in the current health context. I am, of course, referring to the development of telework accentuated by COVID-19. Well, here you are. It's finished. Thank you for listening. And uh, sorry, I don't have time to be more precise. However, you can go to, uh, you can go deeper into the subject by using the following link. And uh, thank you for your attention. Bye-bye.
Thank you very much, Alain, for this um, very interesting presentation in a so short time. And maybe, uh, Minja, do you want to, we have already 20 minutes late, do you want to, to present uh, for the 60 person who are already there? Mm -hmm. uh, Thank you. Thank you very much. First of all, I mean, this has been an absolutely fantastic session, really. I think uh, uh, really uh, congratulations to all of our presenters today who had done a tremendous amount of preparation, uh, making PowerPoints that are very well analyzed and uh, including the methodology. I think it's been uh, very enriching. And, and I would just like to say in terms of conclusion that uh, there is no simple solution in the sense that it, everything depends so much on the country and the, and the culture and the uh, methods of governance of each country. And so I don't think that one can say that the top down is bad or the bottom up is good. It has to be, as Alain mentioned, a merging of the top down and the bottom up, especially uh, as we are trying to promote a sort of heritage-based development, heritage meaning cultural as well as natural heritage, which also, of course, um, uh, uh, puts into consideration the growing need for a more ecological form of uh, development uh, as the climate change issues and the pandemics have uh, uh, emphasized uh, even more uh, the need for a new paradigm of development. And I think, uh, uh, although we all know that uh, a single economy based on tourism alone is very risky, it uh, still provides an opportunity for diversifying the local and the regional economy. So the point is not to fix everything on tourism, but use tourism as a form of, that gives uh, impetus to uh, uh, different forms of development. And I think, uh, as I mentioned in my chat, the uh, growing recognition of the inseparability between tangible and intangible heritage and the need to valorize the intangible aspects of a heritage site uh, is uh, or a tangible site and how they can fuel uh, cultural creativity is an extremely important point. And also, as I mentioned in the chat, we are now in many, many parts of the world in a post-industrial phase of development. You know, um, we are now in the knowledge economy, the knowledge uh, society. And in that regard, as uh, some of the uh, other um, webinars have, have mentioned, there needs to be a growing um, uh, identification of the so-called so social capital held by poor people or people who have been so far marginalized from the main economy. So again, the role is for, as part of the whole decentralization process, that we all agree that decentralization is important for the level of governance to be as close as possible to the people. But the local authorities in many, many countries don't have the tax revenue to uh, give an impetus to the, to the economic uh, uh, takeoff. So this is why, how do you, how can one um, leverage a private sector investment, in this case for tourism, to give a new dynamic to uh, regional, uh, uh, local, uh, regional and local planning? How can one use the tourism investment in order for it to serve the local uh, inhabitants? And this is where the central government and the local authorities policy uh, is, becomes very important. So I think, uh, I mean, you know, we certainly cannot cover all, all the different scenarios today, but really let me just thank you once again for the excellent, excellent presentations of today. And uh, I'm very inspired by the, uh, research uh, that has been undertaking, being undertaken in China. And uh, I, I'm really very encouraged that in such a relatively short span of time, how the uh, Chinese academic circles 
are now working more and more with the local authorities and creating that synergy between governance and knowledge. And it's, there's still, of course, a long way to go in terms of uh, promoting a real participatory approach, but I think uh, we see things, a lot of things happen. So with that, I'd like to, uh, well, in my part, and to thank you once again for uh, really the great uh, effort that you all made to share your experiences and knowledge with all of us. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Minja, and uh, I will conclude to 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 spend to thank all the speakers for all this uh, wonderful time to share your experience. You have in common to work all together since so many years, and most of you says you need time to implement this strategy. So now we, maybe we need to learn from you or to share with more people as uh, Minja said, and thanks a lot, Minja, to give us this opportunity to have a presentation today. I would like also to thank all the people who give help for this international session from uh, the Longzo Institution, Inalco, Matilda, and all the, the Chinese department to the Cité de l'Architecture, to um, the association Petite Cité de Caractère with uh, Alain and Roger uh, representing in the, the network and uh, also to Tianjin University and Tongti University. Thanks a lot and uh, I wish we could have more opportunity to share and we have already people asking if it's possible to, um, for you to share your PPT because they are very, very interested to, to have the, um, the, the detail of your presentation. So you could tell us later by mail or something like that. So um, uh, I have also to thank um, the back office of our World Heritage who are so kind to let us do this uh, wonderful work. Thanks again, thanks to each of you. And uh, maybe I hope we could have other webinar like that. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye-bye,祝你健康,祝你健康,祝你健康,祝你健康,祝你健康,祝你健康,祝你健康,祝你健康,祝你健康,祝你健康,祝你健康,祝你健康,祝你健康,祝你健康,祝你健康,祝你